Hi everyone, it is Dr. Park here, board certified dermatologist, and I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite topics today, which is sunscreen. And I am going to be reviewing for you and comparing these two ultra popular sunscreens. This one is the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, and this one is the Trader Joe's Daily Facial Sunscreen. We're gonna put these two to the test, and I am going to go over the ingredients as well as considerations and some concerns with them, and also test it out. I really wanna know how these match up and if they're really worth the hype. Let's get into it. First of all, I just wanna say that these are both what are called chemical sunscreens. So sunscreens fall into two broad categories. You have your mineral-based ones and your chemical-based ones. And your mineral-based ones are ones that contain zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. And then your chemical ones contain a whole host of other chemical sunscreen filters like avobenzone, oxybenzone, homosalate, octocrylene, the list goes on and on. There may be some special considerations that you may have when you're deciding which category to use. They both work actually by mainly absorbing UV radiation and releasing it as heat. It is a misconception that mineral sunscreens mainly reflect the UV rays. They don't. They do scatter rays, but that's not the main mechanism by how they work. So now we know both mineral and chemical sunscreens work by absorbing the UV radiation and releasing it as heat, but the mineral sunscreen blockers also physically deflect some of those UV rays. What does this mean in practice? So we know that mineral Mineral sunscreens are less likely to cause sensitivity or irritation. Chemical sunscreens, some of the filters can be more irritating, especially to people with sensitive skin. Mineral sunscreens can tend to leave more of a white cast, especially if the percentage of zinc is high. However, I will say that as an avid mineral sunscreen user, there are a lot of great tinted options, which I'll link below. And these are all made with zinc or titanium oxide based sunscreens. And they don't leave a white cast because these have very natural looking tints and finishes. So you can find my recommendations for that in the captions. Mineral sunscreens are my sunscreen of choice for women who are pregnant and also for babies and children, just because we do know that some sunscreen is absorbed systemically and I wanna be extra safe when we're talking about developing babies and also children with large surface body area ratios. Now with that out of the way, I wanna talk a little bit more about these two specific sunscreens. So both of these are chemical sunscreens sunscreens, meaning people with sensitive skin may be more prone to irritation. It can get into your eyes and cause some stinging and irritation in that sensitive skin around your eyes. But on the plus side, these are less likely to leave a white cast and they should go on invisible. In fact, this sunscreen, the Super Goop Unstained Sunscreen has long been my sunscreen of choice for my husband, as well as all my male patients and my male friends, because it goes on totally clear and it feels very lightweight and not sticky, not oily and I find that men really like that because they don't like using sunscreens usually. So I'm really excited to actually have a very affordable dupe here. Let's take a look at the actual ingredients. Both of these have the exact same chemical sunscreen filters. They both contain avobenzone 3%, homosalate, although it's 8% in the Super Goop one and 12% in the Trader Joe's. They both contain octisalate 5% and then octocrylene is at 4% in the Super Goop one and 6 percent in the Trader Joe's. These percentages don't really mean that much. I would say if you have really, really sensitive skin, out of all of the sunscreen ingredients here, avobenzone has been very rarely shown to cause some type of photocontact dermatitis or irritation dermatitis, allergic contact dermatitis. And then octocrylene has also very rarely been shown to cause some type of irritation. Looking further down the ingredient list, both of these contain, wow, the ingredient list is very, very similar. Isododec, dimethicone, which gives it that kind of silky silicone-like finish. This is a mouthful, so I'm just gonna kind of skip ahead. They both contain jojoba esters, which helps with moisturizing. They both contain shea butter, which also helps with moisturizing, and it, it works kind of as an emollient. They both contain tocopherol, which is vitamin E. The one that sticks out from the Super Goop sunscreen that I don't see in the other one are microcrystalline cellulose, diatomaceous earth, and zinc sulfate. So interestingly, 
only these ingredients that are different in the super group. Microcrystalline cellulose, this can be plant derived. It can have very minor antioxidant properties, but mainly it's used to enhance the texture of the product. It can also increase the viscosity of a product. The diatomaceous earth can sometimes help absorb some oils. So that is what's helpful in making this a more matte appearing sunscreen and help you not be so greasy when you use it. And the zinc sulfate I thought was an interesting choice. It's not related to the zinc oxide, which does the heavy lifting of your sun protection. The zinc sulfate can have some antioxidant properties, but it can also be irritating. We see it sometimes being used to help stabilize vitamin C in those products, but otherwise I don't think the zinc sulfate is adding that much. So taking into consideration some of these differences between the two formulations while looking at the ingredient list, I don't think there's anything major that this has that this is missing and vice versa. In terms of what you get for size, they're both 1.7 fluid ounces or 50 milliliters. This one is only $8.99 and this one is $36 for the same amount of product. So there is a huge difference in price. That is one thing that I'm definitely going to keep in mind when I do my ultimate test because sunscreens are expensive, you know, and you have to use it every single day. I sometimes get comments on my social channels like TikTok when I advocate for sunscreen reapplication every two hours and people leave comments like that gets to be so expensive. I'm going through my sunscreen so quickly. So that's why I think it's really important to find one that's great, but also affordable. Looking at the actual SPF rating, they are both SPF 40, although the Supergoop one actually has PA++++. SPF measures level of blockage of UVB rays and the PA system measures level of blockage of UVA rays. Now we know UVA rays contribute to aging and also development of melanoma. When you see a sunscreen that's labeled broad spectrum, that means it blocks both UVA and UVB, but you don't know exactly how much it blocks the UVA unless it has that PA rating. Now this PA rating goes all the way from one plus up to four pluses from moderate UVA blockage up to extreme UVA blockage. And it correlates with something called PPD, which is persistent pigment darkening. So the PPD measures how much longer it would take for your skin to tan if you were wearing this product as opposed to how long it would take to tan if you were not wearing anything at all. So PA++++ correlates with a PPD rating of 8 to 16, meaning you can stay in the sun and it will take about 8 to 16 times as long for your skin to tan or show sun damage basically than compared to if you were not wearing anything at all. So that's just a quick summary on what UVA blockage means and how we measure it and this PA system. Now, interestingly, this one says broad spectrum, so we know that it blocks UVA, but it doesn't have an official PA rating, so we don't know exactly how much it blocks that UVA radiation. Both of them are labeled as water and sweat resistant. This one is labeled fragrance-free. This one is labeled scent-free. They're both saying that they are oil-free. This one's oil-free. This one does not say non-comedogenic, which means it doesn't cause acne, but it is oil-free. All right, I have opened them up and I'm really excited to test them out. So I am going to apply this one on this side of my face and this one on this side of my face. So you can see it comes out clear. I'll also do a close-up of application of this on my hands, maybe later, so you could see that more clearly. It has like a very kind of matte texture. And guess what? I'm actually applying this right over my makeup because people always ask me, how do you reapply sunscreen on top of makeup? And I actually just go right ahead and just apply it. But that's also because I'm at home. And right now I don't really care how my makeup looks. Actually, this looks great. I would use this to reapply over my makeup any day. Okay, as you can see, it leaves this like matte finish. It did not mess up my makeup and I feel it and it just feels super smooth. There is zero white cast, you guys, zero. I love that. So that was the super goop on scene, which I already have. I already know it. I love it. I recommend it all the time. This is the real test, Trader Joe's. I'm like really excited. This is probably how like fashion bloggers feel when they're unboxing their new Chanel bag or something. And I'm just here all excited because I'm opening up a new sunscreen from Trader Joe's. Texture wise, it looks really, really similar. Similar. Also clear. I'm trying to see if there's a scent. I don't really smell any. So actually this one feels slightly 
stickier and tackier just on my fingers. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Also feels great. I mean, it feels really, just getting more on here. It feels a little bit thicker than the Super Goop one. No white cast at all. I think I got some in my hair. Both sides look really good. I'm like really impressed with both sides. No white cast. Texture wise, I think they feel really, really similar. I love that they go on invisible. My skin does not feel sticky on either side. I will say the Trader Joe's side feels slightly tackier, like a little bit, little bit stickier than the, than the Super Goop side, but not extraordinarily so. And I think for the price point, it's still awesome. But maybe it's because I didn't put on enough. I'm gonna go in with a second application of this just to see, just to see if it feels stickier. This one does not have a smell either. And I'm applying a lot, you guys, because I want to really test it out. I'm not just like dotting my face here and there. I am like full on testing this out for you. Okay, so I just put on a ton more just to see. Now I'm gonna touch both sides of my face again. Now that I applied more of the Super Goop, I feel like they're really similar. Both sides are no longer sticky. I think if I just gave it a little bit of time to absorb in, it would absorb in really well. Okay, so now that I have compared the two, I think we can think about the pros and cons. I think obviously for the price, Trader Joe's can't be beat. This is $8.99. You can use this on your face if you want to. You can even use this all over your body, especially if you don't like that sticky tacky feel on your body skin. I think this is a really, really great option. I still love this one. I think it's a really elegant and awesome sunscreen, but I will say with this coming out and only being $8.99, I'm going to start recommending this one, especially because we have to reapply sunscreen so often throughout the day that this is way better bang for your buck. Did you try either of these two? I want to know what you think. Personally, this one's the winner for me, but let me know in the comments. And as usual, hit like and also subscribe because I have a ton of content coming out for you guys soon and I don't want you to miss it. Until next time.